I love New York. Um, I, uh, I recently went to L.A. for a nine-day trip that was absolute hell for all involved. And um, what I will say is I actually don't mind L.A. I think it's fine. Um, what I do think is that it would make more logistical sense if L.A. was, like, closer to New York. Um, or potentially even in New York, you know? Like, if I was an urban planner, God forbid, I would actually take LA and I would put it kind of where Staten Island is. And then I would take Staten Island, which is nice to have, but we rarely use. And I would move that to the West Coast, which I kind of view as storage space. Um, oh my gosh, I want to be really clear about the fact that right now my computer is in the back breastfeeding, which is what I call it, my phone charges from my computer. Um, my phone, speaking of, actually thinks I'm straight. I'm gay but my phone thinks I'm straight. And I know that to be true because it recently auto-corrected hi bitch to hobbit. <laughs> I was like, okay, I can pass. Um, I actually very much can't pass. I was recently, I was, I've already once been featured on Comedy Central's Instagram account. And that's why, this is a huge honor. Um, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, calm down or I'm gonna call the police and report you for obsession with me. Um, <laughs> And um, truly the last time I was on Comedy Central's Instagram, I did no gay material, uh, just like family values shit. Uh, but I did speak in this voice and it upset straight people across the nation. <laughs> um, I think they thought I was doing it on purpose, which I agree would be socio. <laughs> but I did read every single comment because I am absolutely obsessed with myself. And it was just, gay people aren't funny. I hate gay people. I hate the white girl whine. We get it, you like dick. Don't get to sound like one's in you right now. Gay people aren't funny. But then thank God, finally people did come on and say, actually shut up because gay people are funny. And just because this person isn't funny <laughs> doesn't mean no gay people are funny. And I was like, oh my God, even the allies are absolutely dragging me. <laughs> Put it on my tombstone. Here lies Pat Regan. The allies hated him even. <laughs> um, I do have one gay uncle, which is amazing. We're the only two gay people in my family, so you'd think we'd be friends, but we're rivals. <laughs> um, he's a church queen. Uh, he's a church queen. He's like addicted to Cathal can't get enough of this stuff. Um, like the Pope is like his Britney. Uh, whereas I'm kind of more the kind of gay that like loves Queer Eye, you know? Thank you. I love Queer Eye's ethos of like, what matters is not how you look. What matters is how you feel. And how you feel is based on how you look. So we are gonna teach you about under eye stick. Um, I think that's very cool. Uh, I do have a boyfriend right now. Thank you. Um, and his whole entire deal is that this past July, he actually got out of a 10-year relationship with a woman. Pin drop. And, um, but what I will say is he is 5'8", and the girl was 6'2", so it was very much a queer relationship. Um, and people always say, like, is that hard? Is that hard? Is that hard? And honestly, that isn't hard. What's difficult about the relationship is that his name is Angelo, which is obviously a very erotic name. Um, and my name is kind of famously Pat. <laughs> so if we do choose to have sex with one another and we're kind of getting into it, and I'm like, Angelo! And then he's like, Pat. <laughs> We immediately stop, everyone puts their clothes back on. We pretend we had never met each other. Before I had a boyfriend, I actually always picked the wrong guys. Uh, I always picked guys that like ignored me or were annoyed by me or like hated me even. Like recently I was actually on the train platform waiting for the subway to come and then a subway came and just sped by without stopping. And I was like, okay, I'm deeply in love with that train. <laughs> But I am, I am in therapy to kind of work it all out. And I, I know this is a comedy show, but I just have to take a minute while I'm on stage to just earnestly go to bat for therapy because I've been in therapy for a bit and I'm just finding it to be an amazing space to just go and charge my phone. <laughs> like if you're someone who's regularly in Manhattan at 12%, get your ass into therapy because it has saved my life. Um, 
one reason I go to a psychiatrist is to get Prozac, and the primary reason I get, have Prozac is to help with my body dysmorphia. And I've been on it for a couple months, and I'm definitely in a place where I think either Prozac doesn't work or my body looks like this. <laughs> and that's totally fine. Um, I have a gay therapist, and uh, I was talking to him the other day, and I was like, you know, I think one of my issues, one of my problems is that uh, I feel like since I'm not super physically attractive, waited for 10 minutes for him to jump out of his chair and correct me, <laughs> never did. I'm like, since I'm not super physically attractive, I feel like I always have to like make people laugh and conversationally I'm always trying to validate myself through like getting people to laugh and it's probably really exhausting to be around. And he said, yeah, that, that's, I'm sure that's something you struggle with, it's part of your job, but you should commend yourself that you come in here every single day and you talk to me and you don't try to make me laugh. And I'm like, yes I fucking do. <laughs> oh my God. Like thank God that happened in therapy, it's like getting shot in a hospital. 